Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Roxy's in trouble. She's on trial. She's charged with murder. And the case against her is overwhelming. But she has connections. She's made friends in prison with Big Mama. And Big Mama has arranged for her to be defended in court by none other than the famed attorney, Billy Flynn. The following takes place just before the trial begins. <clears throat> Roxy says, oh, Billy, I'm so scared. Billy says, Roxy, you got nothing to worry about. It's a circus, kid. It's a three-ring circus. These trials, the whole world, all show business. But kid, you're working with a star, the biggest. But um bum bum. Give them the old razzle-dazzle, razzle-dazzle them. Give them an act with lots of flesh in it, and the reaction will be passionate. Give them the old hocus-pocus, beating feather them. How can they see with sequins in their eyes? What if your hinges all are rusting? What if, in fact, you're just disgusting? Razzle-dazzle them, and they'll never catch wise. And I will mercilessly stop there. But you get the idea. It's like the old saying, if there's no substance to the steak, dazzle them with the sizzle. I'm reminded also of a movie called Leap of Faith. It's a Steve Martin movie. And he plays a bogus faith healer, kind of a carny rounder who goes from small town to small town, putting on his act, getting people to make exorbitant contributions to his ministry. But the whole time, like Billy Flynn, he's a flim flam man. And when he's on stage and performing his ministry, he wears this jacket covered with thousands upon thousands of sequins so that when the floodlights are turned on him, he almost seems to glow. There's an aura of the Almighty about him. And as a result, people don't see his little sleight of hand tricks and the bogus miracles that he seems to perform. It's all misdirection. It's all fake. It's all phony. But this is the Sunday when we come face to face with the real thing. Jesus has gone up on a hilltop with his disciples, and in their presence, he transfigures. Now, transfiguration is probably not a word that you hear very often in your day-to-day -day conversations. The Greek that is at the root of that word is the same word that we use for the English word metamorphosis. Picture, if you will, a slimy, ugly caterpillar which spins its cocoon and then emerges later as a beautiful butterfly. For weeks now, we've been hearing about how Jesus, the man, is revealed to us as the one, the only, never to be duplicated, Son of God. The 
This is the original. There's no fake. There's no flim flammery here. In fact, there's even a voice from heaven which proclaims Jesus. Now, we've got Peter, James, and John, Jesus' inner circle. They've traveled with him apart from the rest of the disciples on several occasions. This time they go with him up to the mountain. And the first thing that they experience is this transfiguration. Jesus becomes so bright in front of them that they have to shield their eyes. This is one story that's found in all four Gospels. And Jesus is described as glowing like the sun, bright like lightning, clothed so white that no bleach on earth could match it. And the disciples are astounded by what they see. But Jesus is not alone with them, for there appears to them the two greatest figures in the history of the nation of Israel, Moses and Elijah. Moses was the lawgiver. Moses was the one who led the people out of slavery through the wilderness holding out his staff to part the waters of the Red Sea so the people could pass through. The one who gave them water to drink when they were dying of thirst and food to eat when they were starving. He's the one who went up on top of Mount Sinai with the fire and the smoke and the clouds and spent 40 days and nights in the presence of God himself so that when he came back down the mountain, the people asked him to put a veil over his face because he was too bright to look at. He was reflecting the Shekinah, the glory of God. And then Elijah, the greatest of all the prophets. And as we heard in our first lesson, also someone who parted waters so that they could pass through on dry ground. And these two men appear and are in conversation with Jesus. Now, if you are in the company of Moses and Elijah, you must be pretty special. There's a terrible joke. I'm going to spare you by cutting to the punchline about a guy who always tell, told whoppers of stories. And one day when he and his friends were visiting Rome, he announced to them, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to go and visit with my friend, the Pope. And they said, yeah, sure. You know, that's, that's just like Billy. He's going to go visit with the Pope. Uh -huh. And then later on, People come out of the Vatican to stand on the balcony and they look up and go, wow, who's that guy in the robe standing with our friend Billy? <laughs> or if you will, the time when the Pope was traveling from the Vatican to the, the airport and he said to the driver, you know, I've always wanted to drive a limousine. And the driver said, but your holiness, I am your chauffeur. I am your servant. And the Pope says, hey, what's good as being Pope if you can't get to have some fun every now and then? Let's trade places. So they do. But uh, Pope's got a lead foot. <laughs> and sure enough, gets pulled over by the highway patrol. Officer comes, takes a look inside the limousine. You wait here back to his vehicle, gets on the radio. He says, Sergeant, I got a problem. I just pulled this guy over for speeding, but I don't think I can write him a ticket. Why? Did you pull over the mayor or something? No. Did you pull over the president of Italy or something? No. Well, who did you pull over? Well, I'm not sure who it was, but you're not going to believe who he's got as a chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> Moses, and 
Moses and Elijah appear with Jesus. Confirmation of Jesus' status. But then there's a cloud that appears. And clouds also have symbolic meaning for the people of Israel. As Moses was leading them through the wilderness, it was a cloud that went before them during the day. And on top of Mount Sinai, as Moses was visiting in the presence of God, there was a huge cloud that descended on top of the mountain. And so now here we are on the top of this mountain. And we've got Jesus with Moses and Elijah and a very terrified Peter, James, and John. And so Peter, and we're still, I, I can't wait to get to heaven because i got to ask him, you know, dude, what was in your brain <laughs> when you said, let's make three booths, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah? Was that somehow a reference to the Jewish festival of booths? that had just taken place? Or were you thinking to yourself, man, this is really cool. We are on top of the mountain. Our buddy Jesus is, is glowing, you know, like Mr. Clean. And, and he's got Moses and Elijah with him. This, this is cool stuff. I want to stick around. Let's build some tents for these important people. Just a reminder that they were in God's presence. And then finally, from that cloud, comes the voice announcing that Jesus was God's son and then giving the disciples some very clear instructions. Listen to him. Now at various points in your life, I'm sure you have dealt with individuals who have talked a lot of talk but haven't said much of anything. Or people who have all kinds of advice to give about how you should live your life. And they haven't got the first clue of who you are or what you need or what they're talking about. Instead, we've got Jesus. Jesus who knows his business. For other scripture passages about the transfiguration inform us that Moses and Elijah were there to discuss with Jesus what was about to happen. Now you notice at the beginning of the gospel lesson, it said six days later this event took place. If we back up six days, we have Jesus at Capernaum and two significant events happened there. First of all, Jesus asked the disciples to provide him with some information about his identity. And it was Peter who said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And survey says, that's the number one answer. But then just a few bits later, when Jesus is explaining that the Son of God's mission was to suffer and die, Peter tries to prevent it. Forbid it, Lord, that this should happen. Again, Peter, open mouth, insert foot. And Jesus has to rebuke him and say, get out of my way, Satan. Your thoughts are not God's thoughts. They're mine. So Jesus knows what he's talking about because he's the one who came to earth to pay the price for our sin. He wasn't there to show off in a flashy display of power that he's the guy who could cure the sick or feed the starving. The miracles that he performed were to draw attention to his identity as God's son, as the Messiah, as the one who had come to earth to suffer and die so that our relationship with God and our relationship with others might be restored. Now, if that's the case, then Jesus is somebody who commands our attention. We should listen to him. 
because he knows what he's talking about. We heard it a couple of Sundays ago when the people said, we like this guy. He preaches with authority, not like our pastor. Jesus spoke with authority because he carried with him God's authority. God is the one who is able to make things happen. God is the one who is able to make a difference in our lives. God doesn't need any razzle-dazzle. God doesn't need any coat of many sequins. God very simply does what Elisha asked of Elijah. Remember the first lesson? As Elijah's about to leave, he turns to his protege and says, what would you want me to do for you before I leave? And Elijah's response says, you have God's spirit within you, give me a double portion of that spirit. Because if I'm going to carry on your work, I'm going to need God's power within me. And it happens. It happened to Elisha. It happened for Jesus. It happened for Peter and James and John. And it can happen for you too. May God's power rest within you as your soul is transfigured through the presence of God in your lives. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We worship God with our offering.